right before we jump into this video, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Now enjoy this video. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com here at Pamcakes, a Philly cupcakery, to do a five minute portrait with the Nikon D5600, the 18 to 55 kit lens, and the 70 to 300 kit lens. Thank you to Pam for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. That's right. So we are here to do that five minute portrait, run this through its paces, but I want to show you that it's not the camera that makes the photographer, it's the photographer. So no matter what camera and gear you put in your hands, if you know the fundamentals, you should be able to get great results. So now we're going to bake some cupcakes and then I'm going to eat some cupcakes. But if you guys want to feel like you're here with the cupcakes, just lean in close to your screen and give it a sniffy sniff and uh, let's do it. Is there a secret speed, Pam, to how that? Nope. Just, just on, <laughs> on high? Gradually move on up to high. Don't start on high. Don't start on high. Everything no. will go flying. <laughs> we don't want that happening. Don't want that happening. Big mess. So what are the ingredients going in here? So we have butter and sugar going. The healthy stuff, right? The healthy stuff. We're going to add more healthy stuff. Lots of eggs. How many eggs go in there? We're putting six egg whites and six whole eggs. Really? It's a lot of eggs. So what I'm trying to do is we've got the eggs going in and we've got the mixer going. I kind of want to tell the story and have them both in here, but I should get some tighter ones of the eggs too. Uh-oh. Oh wait, I'm gonna try and get the drop in there. Wait, hold, hold, hold. Go for it. Oh yeah, did you see that gooey goodness right there? <laughs> That's the yolk. And I just realized, not paying attention, as I zoomed in, I went from F 3.5 up to 5.6, so I lost a stop of light, but lucky for me, I'm shooting raw. I can bring that back without much of a problem, but I need to keep that in the back of my mind that I have to pay attention to that. Oh, let me see. I'm gonna try to get the drop. Boom! I think I got the drop. We, have, we timed it, we timed it pretty well. I, I got, I missed the, uh, you can see the, the whole line ro running though. I don't have the yolk, but it's still pretty cool. So what part are we making right now? So this is just the butter and the sugar, and then we'll add the eggs in gradually. And then the butter, or yeah, the buttermilk and the flour go in um, alternately. Ooh. I got the tilty out screen so I can kind of do this. Let's see how we did with that. That's right. It's what tilty out screens let you do. Vanilla? Vanilla? Vanilla cake? Can't have vanilla cake without vanilla? That that would that'd be true. That would actually. be sad. That would be a sad cake. <laughs> All right, we'll just let this go for another minute or so. I still love touch screens. Every camera should have this that I can zoom in quickly to see if my focus is on. Love the touch screen stuff. Oh yeah. We're also in a very tight area. There's not a lot of room here, so this is the challenge. This is my challenge every day. <laughs> so let me let me have you hold it, put your hand there like you were yeah. doing, but we're gonna look over here, like portraity stuff. Nah, kind of like that's better. That's fine. That works. I like that. So I can get full body in here. Change up my angle. So what I'm focusing on right now, I have the 18 to 55 on there, and I'm getting the full wide shots, and then I move in and try to get a little bit tighter. I don't try to crop after the fact. I'm not a big fan of cropping because you're gonna lose quality, especially when you shoot at higher ISOs. That's where you're gonna lose out on the, the details in the image because the more you crop, the worse the image is honestly going to look. So try to give yourself multiple shots. 
you do the wide shot, you do the medium, you do the tight, so you have the choice of those three instead of trying to crop one image and worrying about degrading the quality of the file. And grab a bowl. What's the next step? Dish my flour out. Lots of flour. Is that the gluten-free flour? <laughs> no. I'm gonna switch to continuous focus real quick. Check my exposure. All right, let's see, what do we got? All right. Couple in at a time. It's like it's a secret method. What I love about photo stories is that they, they tell everything from start to finish. There's one more? One more. Oh, I'm gonna get this one. And a lot of whites. <laughs> I sometimes order five egg whites and two with the yolk, yeah. That's what I get. Healthy. <laughs> yes, a little bit. Yeah. Somewhat. The egg whites are good. You just need a couple of yolks in there. Yeah. You gotta have some yolks. All right, so we've got that. I wanna switch lenses, so I'm gonna switch lenses over here because I need to continue to do that. It's interesting when you do these shoots because you have to think. Well, not only think, but I actually have to perform on the camera here and educate and teach and try to do this. Um, are there quirks to this camera? One, one of the things that I've learned so far is that this, this is a VR lens, it's 18 to 55. The only problem is they took the VR switches off of it. In order to turn VR off and on, you have to do that in the menu system, which is, which is kind of odd and awkward. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, this is the 70 to 300 DX. This is another kit lens that came with it. I borrowed this from Alan's camera. They have it used there if anybody wants it. I think it is, currently marked at $249.99. So if you want a, a zoom lens, you can make that work. All right, here we go. Still a variable aperture, but it's a 6.3. I'm gonna lose so much light. Oh my God. Cream cheese? I'm actually making a strawberry cheesecake filling to go in some of the vanilla cupcakes. Wow. All right, I wanna get back into single focus, which is super easy. I hit the info button, then I sit here and I touch AFC, turn it to AFS, and I'm back to single focus. Are you the only one who makes the cupcakes? Yes. Looks sharp to me. Oh, more eggs, more eggs, here we go. I'm zooming in so I'm losing light. about thinking, trying to find the angles, trying to find everything. And I prefer using the longer lenses. It allows me to compress the background. When I say compress, kind of get that bokeh out of focus area in the background. That's what I'm going for. With the 18 to 55 lens, it's a fine kit lens to start with. It just doesn't compress the background. It looks more like a snapshot rather than a photograph. And with this, we can start to do that. Uh, and don't forget processing. That's important. We've got to process the raw files later to bring them to life. And I also have to keep in mind, there's lots of details going around. My eyes are jumping around to all the different things. This is just the mixing of uh, the cupcake batter and everything and preparing, then they have to go in the oven, so there's that, then they cook, and then they get set up on this table right here to get um, the frosting on it. And then there's all the shelf right above me that has all of the uh, jimmies and sprinkles on it, so I'll have to get some shots of those for the detailed shots. It's 
So I just realized something with the 70 to 300 on, the rule of thumb is to not have a shutter speed that is slower than your zoom. So if I'm out at 300, I may not wanna have a shutter speed that's slower than 1 320th. I mean, you could probably handhold it 1 250th and not have a problem, because this doesn't have VR, so I have to keep this in my mind. I'm used to using uh, 2.8 glass, which is faster, and I don't have to worry about the variable aperture, but um, that's just something to keep in mind, is that the more you zoom, you have to be cognizant of your shutter speed. What's your favorite cupcake? Do you have one? My favorite cupcake is probably the chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. Really? Super simple, yeah. And I'm a big fan of the chocolate on chocolate. Triple chocolate's probably our biggest seller next to the peanut butter cup. Mm. Yeah. Let me jump in here real quick and say, if you'd like to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash 11 days to get started right now. Now let's get back to the video. Hmm, I have to think. I have to think, I have to think. <laughs> I'm just trying to see all the stuff I could do detailed shots with. No. It's just, this is a super tight lens. It's not giving me what I want because it's super tight. So I'm switching away from the 70 to 300 because it is much diff more difficult to work with a longer lens like this when you're in a small situation. Now it's gonna come in handy with some of the ideas I have in my mind for the cupcakes uh, when they come out. Um, the plan is to, though I don't have a macro lens, to make it seem like they're macro shots, just filling the frame as much as I can with this. All right, I gotta get back to this. And I'm getting hungry too because of the lovely smells. <laughs> Does somebody get to lick the spoon? You can lick the, the whisk if you want. I don't, <laughs> not today. Wait, is it vanilla? Yep. Uh-oh, <laughs> I can? Yeah. I think I have to. That sounds like, I'll, we'll save that. Oh my God, that sounds like it's gonna be amazing. I won't scrape it too much, do you have extra? <laughs> thank you, thank you, we'll save that. Oh my God, I'm so excited for that. Do you know there's people out there who say you shouldn't do that because of the raw eggs? I just say, I shoot raw. People eat raw eggs I eat all raw the time. eggs, it's all good. I'll, li I'll lick the spoon. Anybody out there that says don't lick the spoon or the bowl, cool, that's more for me. My grandmother, she lived to be 103, almost four, she licked the spoon when I made a cake. Did you know I bake? That's right. Didn't know that. From the from the box from scratch. From, yeah. yeah. That's the good stuff. Oh my god, it's so good. It's not good for you, but it's good. No. So you may hear the beep from time to time. That's because in single focus, I like to hear that it's in focus, right? Here in focus, yes, it does actually go hand in hand because when this tells me it's in focus because of the beep, because my eyes aren't super sharp, um, I know that it's locked in. But that could become a distraction and a lot of people who are shooting with mirrorless cameras have the ability to shoot those in complete silence because they can use an electronic shutter. You can't do that here like this, so you're always gonna hear the beep, you're always gonna hear the uh, mirror flap. So if you're looking for something that's completely silent, that's where a mirrorless camera may come in handy. All right, that's gonna go for a couple minutes. Every cupcake has its day. Yeah. So instead of putting all eight dozen in at a time, I'm just gonna test a dozen. So I'm gonna put this in first. And I'll tell you guys that the lighting has changed now that I've gotten closer to the window. So I'm quickly using the touch screen to change the ISO. Oh, and I was right. Best exposure ever. Actually, oh, that looks good. Just waiting and observing and then capturing the moment, changing my angles up. Throw this in the oven. Actually, I like the light, the mix of light. Oh, look, there's a, oh, oh. Can I have you do that again? Yep. Can, I, can I ask you to do that? I gotta change my ISO real quick. I like it, hold it, hold it. I'm using the door here. Let me try one more. I don't wanna let all the heat out, but okay, you're good. 
I'm not afraid to direct just a little bit when you want to get the shot because the door was open and I was using the cake door. Well, we don't call it a cake door. It's an oven door, cake door. glass thing to shoot through and get Pam putting in cupcakes. Well, they're not, are they technically cupcakes yet? When does it become a cupcake? Right now it's just cake. Batter? I would just call it, yeah, cake batter. Huh. I mean, technically it's a cupcake. It's it's batter in a cup. <laughs> so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but we won't call it a cupcake until it's fully dressed. So I'm trying to make sure I keep the best quality image possible. And partly that's watching the ISO. At 3200, it's probably still fine. I don't want to push it too far because I don't, you probably don't need to. 1 60th of a second is good enough for what we're doing. So 2500 ISO should give us good results. Um, but I'm just watching these things. I'm looking at noise, I'm looking at grain while I'm shooting, trying to see what's going to work the best. And there's something going on that when I'm looking through the camera, I hear a beep when my nose hits the touch screen. Though nothing's on on the touch screen, I don't know what's actually changing. I don't know what's changing. <laughs> my nose is touching and I hear a beep, but I don't know. Oh, and it smells like strawberry right now. Is that strawberry? Yep. It smells like a doll. I had the, str I had the strawberry shortcake doll as a kid. Uh -huh. It was really small and it smelled like strawberry, right? Yep. I used to, I was like, <sighs> strawberry shortcake smell. <laughs> So tasty. Try to get some of these detail -y shots, which means I should probably switch the lens. I can smell the cupcakes. <laughs> so I almost did this shot where I wasn't fully wide enough to get all of Pam in here, but then I didn't take it because it wouldn't have looked good if I did this. See, I would have cut off the ankles and that wouldn't be good, but I like that. Yeah, give me that look right here. What you were just doing, it was all like, what did I do? It was, it's that, it's just a really, look at the shoes. There's cupcakes, cupcakes. on your shoes. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna sticker. have to get details of cupcakes on the shoes. But I like the way that you were looking. You were, you crossed the leg a little bit, you were relaxed. Yeah, yeah, let me do that real quick. That's, that's gonna be nice little portraity type thing. Boom, I'm gonna check. Noise. Oh yeah, see I'm I'm keeping all of the drapey things up in there. Let's see. Locked in, a little tighter here. Oh, I cut off the fingers. I actually did. That's not good, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. It wasn't my fault. But I corrected it real quick. I hate cutting off fingers in photos. There we go. That should be good. Even with the kit lens, we're making it work. I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge. All right. Until we're ready for What's it. What's the next step? The cupcakes have to come out and cool? So that dozen will come out and then I'll probably dish out the rest of these. Let's see inside. All right. I've got to deal with the backlight. And she's super quick at this. So this is interesting because it's backlight, but I like it. So if you notice from my angle, we have a GoPro set up back there on a pole to get everything wide, which means that's gonna be in the background of this photo unless I think about how can I cut it out without actually doing that later. Well, I changed my angle so that Pam ended up blocking the GoPro so that it's not in the background sticking out of her head or off to the side like this one shot, you can see it. So you're not probably gonna have a GoPro running because you're not doing a photo shoot that's being filmed, but you may have something in the background that's a distraction, like a fire extinguisher or an exit sign, and you wanna use the subject, use their body to block something in the background. And don't, you don't need to tell them to move, 
you move yourself because it's easier for you to just think and move around than to bother the subject you're shooting. So that's that. I've got my step stool. I'm going to get my step I stool. I have a step stool right there too, if you want one. It's right here. If you need to go higher, you can go higher with that one. Oh, that one right there. Yeah. Well, oh, that's good. And this also has Wi-Fi, so I could get on a, uh, I could put it up on a stick too yeah. to get a different angle. All right, make sure I don't kill myself. <laughs> I'm insured. I have insurance. Okay, that's good. <laughs> bad. <laughs> I just see my own camera bag in the bottom corner. Oh. <laughs> One of those things that caught my eye, I had to move it out of the way. Oh, it's good having a rotating screen. So I'm gonna make a couple different flavors with this batter. I just wanna check this cake and make sure yep. it's not going too big. No, it's perfect. Oh, this has touch screen. Well, I'm touching the screen and it's taking pictures as soon as it's in focus. I think I like that, I think, but I should probably get out the Wi-Fi for something like this in a second. <gasps> Ooh, pink. If you didn't notice, I like the color pink. <laughs> yep. back into continuous. Switch lenses. See how we do right here. Cupcake challenge. Like this angle right here. You may notice the uh, microphone clip on Pam, that's because we're capturing her audio. So normally, if you're doing a candid shoot, you wouldn't see that there, but for this shoot, we wanna hear what Pam has to Time's up, <laughs> Stop. hands up, don't put any more icing on. Nobody move. <laughs> the judges are about to rule on who the winner is of the cake off. Do you know the difference between a cupcake and a muffin? Yes. Muffin is a lot more dense than a cupcake. Icing. And icing. Icing. <laughs> I'm gonna bring these back here. So you let them settle first? Well, I'm gonna dish the rest of this out. Oh, so they all go in at the same time? Yep. That makes sense. Are those crushed up Oreos? Oreos? Really? <laughs> Are those crushed up Oreos? I commonly refer to it as dirt. Dirt. It does look like dirt. Just tasty dirt. How did you decide to go in the middle there? I have to ask because I'm trying to, I was like, I was waiting to find the shot and then I figured you'd start on the right or the left and then I'd be ready for the middle and then you put it right in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't really thinking. Because I was trying to get this shot. I can definitely feel myself shaking because this doesn't have the VR in it. Oh, there's more going in over here? Yep. I have more chances to get this right. Hold, hold, still, still there. Without shaking, without shaking. Because shaking, all right, we're good. Shaking brings out of focus. Oh, that looks, oh, see here, check this out. Oh, yeah. See, it's, uh, Awesome. You can see the dirt up in there. <laughs> oh, it's starting to smell we tremendous. We don't really bake with dirt. <laughs> no, when I say di dirt, I'm referring to uh, crushed up Oreos. I'll probably, I'll have you hold the next one as okay. well. And I'll try to get some going into which one is it? 
the far, that yeah. one. All right, hold that, hold that. Boom, good. Oh, you're doing that? Oh, I gotta get that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got an idea, sorry. It's okay. So I'm gonna, go ahead, go ahead and hold it there like you're, you're looking all, let me just double check. We'll make that work. So what I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna have you hold that down low like where you were, but you're gonna, le I'm gonna get that in focus and you out of focus. Okay. So if you could reach it towards. This far one? Yeah, let's see how that works out. And let's you're gonna be, like you're looking down. So you're like almost on the same level. Like you're looking in close, yes, that. That's what I'm going for. Okay. That's gonna be perfect. And just tell me if you need to get them in the oven or something, so if I'm taking too long. One. Oh, look at that, it's still going. Yep, we're good. So that's what it was doing. So I focus in on, on the spoon, oh, no, the, uh, do we call that a ice cream ice scoop? Ice cream scoop. And, um, and got you out of focus. It's just trying to find the shots. They just so happen to happen. And then you have to figure out how to quickly react and, and capture it. I'm gonna put yep, these you're in the fine. oven. Feel the heat. I feel the heat. I, I mean, I'm in the kitchen, so when you're done with that, I'll show you what I was doing. Even with this basic kit lens, most people are like, oh, you can't do that with a kit lens, you know, blow it out of focus, but we're doing it. Yeah. We're making awesome. it work. So what's up next? They cook up. So they're gonna bake. I'm gonna bring that dozen down that I already took out. And we're getting ready to ice them. Stick that, yep. Stick that in there. This can all go in the fridge. I'll leave that for you to lick. <laughs> yes. Should, we, should I do that in the meat? No, I should wait till the end, right? You should probably do it now. All right. <laughs> do it before now? Before it gets all... I'll, I, I can lick the spatula? Yeah. I'm gonna just... And then put it in the sink when I'm done? Yeah. You can lick that. You can lick anything in that bowl. All right. That's the fun part. Licking. Do you do that too? Yeah. <laughs> all right. You ready? Let me try this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, it's cookies and cream. It's so tasty. It's like having an Oreo that was put into a blender <laughs> and then it's in my mouth. Oh my God. Mm, uh. Are you hiring? <laughs> Taste testers? No, just bowl liquor. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's really good. <laughs> and this is gonna be a cupcake? Yep. A cookies and cream cupcake? Yep. And I cut the middles out of the cookies and cream cupcake and put cream filling in it so you guys can eat the middles too if you'd like. <sighs> lots of lots of good stuff you can eat in this kitchen <laughs> before it's actually done. Oh my god. Are you allowed to just sell the batter? Um, I don't know. You don't put it in like a, 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 a tube? Yeah. Like a push pop? Sure. <laughs> They might get sick, but it might not be the best idea. I sell frosting. All right, I'm done looking this. <laughs> Which sink should it go in? The left, the middle, the, the middle. middle? Yeah. Oh my God, you guys have to try that. Oh my God. Yeah, we can get some stuff off. I can bowl. see the comments now. You shouldn't be licking <laughs> <Yeah>. raw <laughs> eggs. Raw batter. Mm. All right. All right. Mm. Yeah, so let's do it on this side of the table this time. Okay. And then I'll rotate and I'll figure out how to make this all work. So these are cooling racks. Cooling racks. I have a couple of those at home for me when I just need to be cool, you know? <laughs> if I'm not cool enough, I tell <laughs> people, I'm like, I lay on the rack and it makes me cool. All right, now we've got cooling gonna happen here. Yeah, perfect little cupcake. Now, do you ever make 12 and end up with 10? Because you ate two. Maybe, sometimes. <laughs> that could definitely happen. If I accidentally mess one up. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> I don't know what happened. All right. Chatting with the subject loosens them up. It makes for good photos. See, I wanna do portraits with, I gotta think which lens do I wanna do portraits with? It's a very interesting, see, I like that. Let's see what we have from right here. Hmm. I like the candidy stuff. I yeah. like 
Yeah. Now I'm going to wait till you're piping it and then I'll talk to you okay. from there because, because that just looks, uh, you know, authentic. More, More yeah. authentic. So here I'm going to, I'm going to work with the cupcakes without eating them and <laughs> let's switch lenses real quick. These lenses are super light. It always would help to put a lens cap on before you put the lens back face down. Now I have to get out my lens cloth and clean it. Brand new lens cloth. You can pick these up at store.fronosphoto.com. If you're ever in Philadelphia, make sure you stop by Pam Cakes to get some cupcakes. Tell her the fro sent you. Let's smile. Let's look right here. Let's like, smile. Let's smi I mean, you're always <laughs> smiling. Fold your arms, fold your arms. That looks good too. Fold them? Yeah, like this is my cupcakery. It actually is your cupcakery. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, this is good because I have the cupcakes in the bottom. So this could be foreshadowing for what we do next. So I'm going to switch into um, single focus. So there's a difference. Single focus uh, means that I can lock the focus on you because you're not moving. Mm -hmm. And continuous means it's continuously focusing, which I don't want it to do. So in this case, yeah, that's right. That's it. Boom, boom, boom goes the boom. See, I'll show you. And we'll do it again when the cupcakes are there, getting done. But you see, put those out of focus mm -hmm. right there. And I do want to get a shot like this though, when all the cupcakes are done. Yeah. Because that's, it's just cool. This is like, these are mine. Yeah. I did this. Right. And then I'm going to come over here and we'll get, those will be our portrait cheese. Okay. Portrait cheese style shots. Okay, cool. Would you like to show the world that you shoot raw? Do you like the I shoot raw shirt that I'm wearing? Or would you like to check out all of the different options that I have? Go to store.fronosphoto.com and use the code PAMCAKES at checkout to get 12% off your entire order. And now back to the video. So it looks like the baking is done. There's nothing left to lick batter off of, but uh, what's next, Pam? Um, we're gonna wait for these to cool so we can frost them. And I'm gonna cut some holes in these cookies and cream so I can stuff them. And then they'll all be frosted. Ooh. So my goal now, I wanna get some low angle shots of Pam. You're good to go, Pam. Mm -hmm. So you can go for that. Try to get these cupcakes that are cool, you know, they're cooling on the cooling rack. Get them out of focus using the 70 to 300. Uh, I already put the monopod plate on here because I wanna get some, use Wi-Fi to shoot straight down. Try to get some awesome shots. And that's what I'm gonna do. I wonder if there is such a thing as a Bob Ross cupcake. You should wait, you should, on Bob Ross's birthday, you should make a cupcake for Bob Ross. What would it be? Well, it would be, it would be happy clouds. And so it would be, he's kind of vanilla, so I would think vanilla cupcake. Okay. And then maybe even if we made a fro cupcake, it would have, um, it could have uh, cotton, cotton candy. candy on top. Mm -hmm. And they could be, that could be the hair and then a palette of color. Yeah. We Make a little pick that. to put on top of it. Yes. <laughs> Out of candy. Should give us nice out of focus. And again, proving that even with a kit lens, you can still get the background out of focus. Just focus on something close to you and it's gonna blow the background out. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is pretty darn simple and it looks really good. So we'll be able to move the trash can when we need to? Yeah. We can hide that? Yep. Just trying to think of things that would be a distraction in the image. Though it's normally there, it would look cooler if it wasn't there. Right, I can move it now. Yeah, yeah, let's move it to the back. <gasps> Ooh, piping. Yeah, sounds gonna get stuck. I've always wanted to do this. You should frost a cupcake. I get to frost a cupcake? That would, yeah, we should I'll, I'll frost a cupcake. <laughs> oh, I should pre-focus right here. I don't know how good of a photo that is. More, that's more for like video, <laughs> if I was to get that for video. But it does look good because it's the thing going inside of there. Never frosted on the cooling rack before? No? No. <laughs> Sprinkles will just go everywhere. But then you get to eat them. <laughs> oh, but I could do that. I could shoot that. Yes, sprinkles. 
Switching lenses, I'm switching lenses, I'm switching lenses. And then I'm gonna get wider. You know what would help, Steven? Do we have a problem? Do we see a problem with this shot? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Look at that. <laughs> well, earlier. Good job. <laughs> earlier, I talked about not. Um, not um, putting them face down and getting dust on them, so I put the lens cap back on. Oh, hold that, yeah, that's good, let's see. Boom, yeah, that looks good. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be a happy customer. <laughs> gonna move All right, I think because we have some icing on this stuff, that I want to try the top-down shot with the monopod and the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to get the monopod set up over here. Get onto this thing. You trying to see what we're doing here? Hmm? This is art. Mm -hmm. This is masterful art here. And by masterful, I mean not really. <laughs> so I'm making sure. So there's a couple of steps that I have to go through to do this. One is loosen this monopod till it snaps in, then tighten it. Doesn't always work perfect. Um, then I have to get the Wi-Fi on in the menu system. There's the menu button hidden right here. Wi-Fi is currently on. And then the fun part is making sure, will the iOS connect? So I have to go to Wi-Fi and I literally have to pick the camera from the list. There it is, D5600. It's gonna connect to it, then it will work. It does take time to connect this stuff. There, it's now connected. Go back to the app, Wi-Fi connection established, updating display and going and going and going and going. So we're giving, we're giving the cupcakes time to cool. There you go. So now we're connected. We can see that everything is now on my phone. My bag is in the way. I'm gonna make sure that I move my bag out of the way this time so it's not in this. Totally move it. Oh. I have to make sure the exposure is right because I can't change the exposure on this thing for whatever reason once it's up there. So I have to do all that. You're uh, actually. Don't worry about me, I won't drop it. <laughs> I've only dropped it twice. So I'm using the bottom of this Ben Rowe thingy to dig into my stomach. Right. Yeah, you can step in wherever you need to go. I'm good, just right here. And I just have to find the right angle. And by right angle, I mean proper. Because I still want to get my angle straight here. Oh yeah. As you hold that, hold that, hold that. My toe is in there. I gotta get my toe out of it, hold on. Not a crumbs. <laughs> All right, I got it. I'll just have to make sure my feet aren't in this thing. My goal is to get this as straight as possible, which means I shouldn't talk. And you know what's hurting my straight lines here? I'm breathing. Oh, just <laughs> stop doing that. So my stomach is moving, <laughs> causing it to go. <laughs> It's much easier when you don't breathe. <laughs> I'm gonna step in just a little bit. Tweak this right here. More of an angle. Tighten it. This way I can have it straight down. Okay, you're good. I have to remember to stop breathing. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a challenge. All right, I'm gonna move this way a little bit. Yep, you're fine. I, 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 it's good right there. That's perfect. That's exactly what I needed. So hold that. Hold on, sorry. All right, hold one more, let me. Okay, you are good to go. And at the very end, I'll do this again without you, but we'll just get the cupcakes in there. Okay.
Now I want to shoot down the cupcakes. I'm going to quickly switch. You have more to do over there, right? Yep. Okay, good. I'll I'm going to quickly while switch. <laughs> She's refilling. I'm switching. Now I'm going to see how these pictures turned out. Now I could shoot down this way and get these cupcakes out of focus now that they have icing on it. It's going to be pretty cool. Lens cap off. All right. Wow. And do you usually listen to music when you do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's not always so quiet. Would you like me to sing or something? Yeah, start singing. What would you like? <laughs> My singing is tremendous. <laughs> The last row. Oh, that's just vanilla with chocolate? Yep. Oh my God, that looks good too. Does it get sprinkles? Yep. Oh, they look lovely. I'm gonna try a vertical. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that, sprinkles. <laughs> Falling cool. like rain. <laughs> have, I, have I earned a cupcake yet? I think you have earned a couple cupcakes. <gasps> What's next? Eat them. <laughs> oh, so you're done done now, right? Yeah. So why don't we get into portraity mode? We'll just get a couple of shots of you and then we'll call it a day because I know we're running pretty good here. So let me ask you a quick question. How do you organize and keep track of all of your gear? Well, if you don't know how, check out my new app called My Gear Vault. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear, and it's absolutely free. So go check it out at mygearvault.com, and let's get back to the video. So normally I would have Pam take the microphone off, but being that we want to hear what she has to say, if we have a conversation, we're gonna leave it on. So for your photo shoots, you probably wouldn't have somebody wearing a microphone. Just wanted to point that out. All right, so you have all your cupcakes made, and now it's happy time. Now we can eat them. Is that what happens? <laughs> or I sell them, I don't eat them. <laughs> it's unfortunate that you're all the way over here, but it's also not terrible for me. Right. Because then I'd be walking, I'd be like, I want to have a pancake today. <laughs> Your cravings would be Oh, I, I figured out what my nose is doing when my nose touches the screen. When my nose touches the screen, the grid comes up in the viewfinder. When it touches it again, the grid goes off. Confusing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even notice that until right now. Okay, just give me your eyes right here. There you go. Just make sure you get that all in there. I kind of want to have you down on a low angle, looking through the cupcakes, it's almost like you're surveying the icing and did you get enough? That's right, that's it. That's perfect. I wish I could be closer. Let's see if I can, I can get there. What if we pull the table back just a little bit? Sure. I'm just trying to get some separation because I, I have this lens on here and I don't have a lot of room to move. Yeah. So we're improvising. Actually, I like the way that these, I like the contrast of the brown with the colors on yeah. them. Yeah, can I look at you? Yeah, you can look right here. All right, right here. Up a little higher. There you go. Up a little higher and then we can get the smart. There we go. And now we, I'll do it a little wider. There we go. Now you can look right here and smile. It's like, these are your cakes. They're your cupcakes. They're gonna go to nice homes in somebody's belly. And I think, I think that's good. So let me just get you holding one of these bad boys. Classic one. Yes, Classica. 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 Which one should I hold? And I'll have you hold it in your left hand. We'll try to get the cupcakey tattoo. So just hold it like this. Yeah, actually, we'll make that.
see if I can get the this. All right, so that looks good. And actually, let me get you just holding one. And so go to your left a little bit. And this way, I liked I liked the way that you were just holding it. You kind of had this cool like, hey, this is me, but it was it was kind of down in here, closer to you, because I'm gonna get. It's like, how about you're presenting it to me, basically, and you're smiling, <laughs> and you're like, hey, you can hold it with the two hands. Works. You'd be like, hey, one. That's it. Let me just move my focus point. Yeah, that works. And then the last thing I want to do is I just want to put it up on that cake thing again. Todd, can you put the cake thingy up for me, please? And I just want to get some pictures of it right there. Okay. <laughs> move it around however you want. I'm going to actually come around this way so I can zoom in on it. I see how I probably need to shoot the other way. That's completely blown out. I'm gonna run this way. And then I'm stopping. <gasps> Ooh! So for the last shot that I wanna do, I wanna have the cupcake here. I saw all the sprinkles in the background and was like, ooh, that would make for a great background. I am going to put the cupcake here, sprinkles out of focus, tight focus right on the cupcake using the 70 to 300. And being that I'm zoomed out to around 300, it's gonna be at F6 or 6.3. Do you think we can blow out the background? I, I do, actually. A lot of people think you can't, but I'll show you. Ooh, look at the cupcake. There you go. Nice and sharp on the cupcake, and you've got the icing nice and icingy -gy <laughs> with sprinkles on top, and then the sprinkles in the background. I'm gonna put one off to the left so that Pam can then put her logo to the right. I'm thinking for social media. And all, right. you know. The reason I'm snapping a bunch is there's no VR in this and I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second out at 300 millimeters. So there may be some, some handshake going on in there, but no, I got it nice and sharp. That's why I took three in a row because at one of them I'm gonna settle and it's gonna be good. Sprinkles out of focus. That looks awesome. I think there's one thing left to do and that's eat a cupcake. So we tested out the camera and the only way to determine how the pictures are and how good the camera worked is to send it back to the loft. But before we do that, we have to see how good the cupcakes are and how they turned out. And the only way to do that is to eat them. Pam, thank you for having us here. You're welcome, thank you. We can eat this now? We can eat this now. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, my, my jaw cracked. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so classically tasty. It's like it tastes icing in my mouth. <laughs> what? And it's so moist. And, and then, and, oh my. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to spit it out, but it's too good. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I haven't even had lunch yet. You're messing with my diet. This is a good lunch. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. I have more? <laughs> I have more. <laughs> mm. I'm icing, like all over my face. <laughs> I just want icing in and around my mouth with the icing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I stop? <laughs> Can I, <stop? laughs> I don't want to eat anymore. It's too good. <laughs> So here we are back at the loft and I want to remind you that you can head over to the website to download sample RAW files from the D5600. You can also take a look at full res exported JPEGs. So one of the big questions that I've been asked is what are the differences between the D5600 and the D5500 and the honest to God's truth is not very much. The 5600 added SnapBridge, where the 5500 only had Wi-Fi. There's a couple of other minor differences, but this shoot is all about the challenge. The challenge to use a basic body in a D5600 with two kit lenses. The 18 to 55 brand new lens with VR, except it doesn't have a VR switch on it, as well as the 70 to 300 DX kit lens, and see how I can get good results because that's what it's all about. It's not so much about the camera as the person using it, but let's turn here and look 
at some of the images. So here is the first shot that I want to show you. It's taken with the 18 millimeter lens at 18 millimeters. It kind of comes across as a little bit of a snapshot because the kit lens kind of does do that. But what I want to point out is that this was taken at 2500 ISO and the lighting situation was interesting. We had tungsten lights, we had daylights, which created for an interesting mixed lighting situation. So let me show you how the white balance of the camera actually perceived this. So I'm going to reset this and look how yellow it is. Now, in my editing of the RAW file, I was able to pull that out without a problem. Uh, and most people, until they start editing RAW files, they're going to have a little bit more trouble editing the JPEGs because they don't have as much detail. So let's go to the next shot because I just wanted to show you this one compared to the next one. The next one moves in a little bit tighter. It looks less like a snapshot because I went ahead and moved in. Well, I zoomed in. I went to 27 millimeters instead of 18 millimeters. So moving on to this image, it's one of those detailed shots. So I want to remind you guys that you can't forget about the details. I'm a big proponent of showing the wide angles, the telephotos, the mediums, as well as the detailed shots, because those detailed shots are glue that keep your photo story together. In this case, it's eggs that are keeping the cupcakes together. So moving on, I switched over to the 70 to 300 to show you the difference of what you can get. Now you can see the separation of the background happening. It's more compressed where on a shot like this, you can see more details and everything's just in focus. Whereas with the 70 to 300, it's not all there in focus, but the subject is nice and tight and isolated. And that brings me up to this. I want to remind you guys that it's about the photographer more so than it's about the tools. The 18 to 55 kit lens is perfectly fine to get started with. The 70 to 300 is okay to get started with as well, but they are variable aperture lenses. That means that they're always changing apertures as you zoom, opposed to the more expensive lenses, which are fixed aperture lenses, meaning they don't change the aperture as you zoom. Now the point of me telling you this is because I want you to understand that it's all about glass, 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 glass. What I want you to understand is that the quicker you can graduate from using kit lenses, the better your images are going to end up being. Now a lot of people may not tell you this. They may tell you that no, your camera sucks because your pictures aren't that good, when in reality it's the lenses that are holding you back. It's not easy to understand how to get your exposure proper with variable aperture lenses. It took me years to figure this out on my own and I and I just understand that once you get better lenses and you graduate from the kit lenses, you're going to start seeing better results because you're going to enjoy shooting photos again and not say, oh, my camera sucks. So keep that in mind. But to start out, the kit lenses are fine. But if you think that your camera sucks, it's not really your camera. It's kind of you using it and not really having the best tools for the job. All right, so let's get back here. I'm not trying to be angry or anything. I'm just trying to be honest that it's about the glass. The quicker you understand that, the quicker you can get to getting better images. So here we have a 1250 ISO, 25 millimeters. I just like the angle of this shot. Even with the kit lens, the 18 to 55, I was able to get the background to start to blur out, to get that bokeh in the background because I got closer to the subject. I also like the color, but this is where the split lighting is difficult. We've got daylight coming in from the right. We've got tungsten light coming in from the top. And this is where processing and editing comes in handy when you shoot the rolls. This is a detailed shot. So, I used the oven's door to frame Pam right here, putting the cupcake batter in to the oven. It's about the story. Remember that when you're shooting, keep telling yourself that. What can I do to tell the best photo story possible? So moving on, we've got Pam here in black and white and also color. And I'm not sure which I like better. Do you like the color? Do you like the black and white? It's hard to say, but I like this as a portrait. I really do. I like this. It's in her kitchen. She's standing there. It looks good. Now we're going to zoom in on it. We're going to zoom in on it because a lot of people always want to say, look, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of grain. But let me show you something over here real quick. Do you see this little square box on the top left hand corner? Look how much of the image is left outside of that box. You're zoomed in 
one to one. That means you're going to see imperfections in the image because you're looking for it. The truth of the matter is, if you're not pixel peeping, you're probably not going to find issues with your images. Yes, there's noise and grain when I look at this at 2500 ISO, but if you were to print this out, you would never be able to see the noise or the grain unless you printed it out super large and got this close to it. So I'm kind of tired of getting people saying there's so much noise and grain and I need to use noise reduction. I don't touch noise reduction in my images because the more you pull out noise reduction, the more your image looks softer and doesn't have that sharpness. I'd rather have a sharp image with some noise and grain when I zoom in on it than have a mushy, soft image. There's also a lot of softwares out there that will try to tell you you need to buy them in order to save your images from noise and grain like this when there's no issue in the first place. I'm still not angry. I'm just emphatic. Uh, so I wanted to show you this one right here as we zoom in because it back focused. So the thing with the kit lenses against this backlight, and what I mean by back focus is it missed the subject, even though I was focused on the subject, the lens focused back here on the blinds or the shades or whatever these things are called. Uh, and a lot of that has to do probably with this backlight happening, but it just misses. So that's another thing with the kit lenses is sometimes they do miss on the back focus. Now this is extreme backlight. And what I wanted to point out here is when I go ahead and revert this back, let me show you where it started. Look how muddled and mushy this looks before I edited it. So let me go back and show you what it looked like after editing and look how much better this image looks. It came to life. The point of this one is to show you that with extreme backlight, if I was to let the camera make the decision in auto, this image probably wouldn't look terribly good. The exposure would be thrown off. But I shot this manually, so I started to learn how to do that over time, and you guys can figure that as well. I have a lot of free videos to help you there. But I love this shot, and I will point out again that uh, it does have the GoPro in there, but I talked about that in the video, and in the next one, I just showed you where I shifted to the side and used her body to block the GoPro. Uh, the reason I picked this bad boy out is to show you that I have my camera bag in the bottom side. I know I mentioned it in the video. You want to be careful that that stuff doesn't get in the way, and then I removed it in this one as well. This is one of those detailed shots. She's putting in the, the batter into the cupcake-y, cupcake -y things to then go into the oven. I just think it's a cool detail shot that keeps glue, or it is the glue that makes your photo story better. Same thing with something like this. It's a nice detailed shot. And showing you again with the 70 to 300 kit lens that yes, you can absolutely isolate your subject from the background. You don't need the most expensive lenses in the world to do that. You can still do it even with the kit lenses. But remember, hashtag glass, 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 glass. Because the sooner you realize that better glass will get you better results, you're gonna do much better. But starting with the kit lenses, that's perfectly fine. I started there as well. Same thing with the next series right here. I wanted to show you, focused in on her with the 70 to 300. Now I'm focused in on just the ice cream scoop. Then I came in even closer. So I went from 125 millimeters to 210 millimeters, all the while staying locked focus here just to show you blowing out the background. That is extremely important right there. Moving on, just a cool portrait, environmental portrait. She's right there switched it to black and white. People ask, why did you go black and white? It's personal preference. Sometimes color feels better. Sometimes black and white feels better. That's for you to figure out. But I'm pretty happy with the results I've been getting from the camera. I'm very happy with the photo so far in this story. This tells a great story. Nice and focused on her hands using that kit, 18 to 55 again. Color looks good. Sharpness looks good. It's not the sharpest lens ever made but you can get good results and these images are showing you that. Now this is one of my favorite shots of the entire bunch. So how did I get this image? I put the D5600 up on a monopod, I used SnapBridge and connected it to my phone so I could see what I was about to shoot and I got a bird's eye view of Pam putting icing on the cupcakes. Something like this, if you did a shot like this, separates the amateurs from the professionals. 
even with the basic kit lens, you can get these results too. Imagine what your friends and family are gonna say when you post great shots just like this that look this good because you use the technology that the camera offers you. So the D5600 has it, and even if you have a D5500, you can still do the same thing that I did right here. But this shot looks incredible. This is at 2000 ISO, and again, if we zoom in, Noise and grain, ah, ah, terrible. No, it's not terrible. Look at the print. The print looks incredible. I can get this close to the image and I can't see the imperfections that are there even at 2000 ISO. So don't be afraid of ISO. Don't be afraid to push it, but understand the limitations of your camera, but know that if you understand your exposure triangle, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, and how it all works, you can get great results whether you use the least expensive camera or the most expensive camera in the world. I love this photo. Moving on, one of another one of my favorite photos is we isolated Pam here with the 70 to 300 again, just showing you cupcakes in focus right here, piping going on in the background. This is a great story. And I wanna remind you that if you didn't know that I took these with a D5600 and the kit lenses, you probably would have never guessed that that's what they were taken with. Sure, you may be able to see certain imperfections, but it's about the images at the end of the day. It's about the photos that you captured more so than the gear that you're using. If I'm happy with the results because I was able to capture the moment and I love the photos, then that's all that matters. It doesn't matter the camera or the lenses that I use. And of course, sometimes using better gear does make your job easier, but when you know what you're doing, you can get great results. So moving on, probably one of my Second favorite shots behind the top down bird's eye that we just saw is this one of Pam taken at 2500 ISO holding the cupcake with a bunch of cupcakes here. I don't know why I'm describing it to you because you see it on the screen, but it looks great. And if anybody missed it, I remind you that yes, she does have the microphone on because we were doing interviews and I talked about that. But this print looks awesome. Even looking at the noise structure here. It has more of a grain look, more of a film look than, than you see in a lot of other cameras. Nikon does a great job with that. But this is clean. Even though I'm zoomed in one to one, look how far we're zoomed in. Now get close to the print that we printed out. It looks perfectly fine. I love the colors, I love the tones, and if you were standing four feet from it, if you were standing two feet from it, you probably wouldn't sit there and say, oh my God, the noise in the grain looks terrible. This is another one of those where if you looked at it, you wouldn't be able to say what it was taken with, but I love this picture. Moving on, cupcakes! Again, showing you with the 70 to 300, isolating the subject, the main subject in the middle, the front ones out of focus, it's blurred, it's in the bokeh area, and then you have nice background bokeh as well. And this is showing like it has more noise and grain when you zoom in on it one to one. And the print itself, the only where, the only area in the print that I saw any issues was slightly in a shadow area where I saw, saw a little bit of noise. But at the end of the day, again, nobody's gonna look at it and be like, oh my God, there's so much noise in that picture, unless you sat here on the computer and looked at it like this. Download the raw files and see for yourself and definitely don't add noise reduction. Or if you do add noise reduction, because Lightroom adds just a smidgen of it, the more you overdo it, the more your image looks mushy and terrible. So don't try to think that you need to save your images in post by taking out noise. Noise is really not your enemy because it's there, it's grain, it's been there throughout the history of photography. It's not that big of a deal. The image is what matters the most and I think this image looks great. Boom, showing you at one one hundredth of a second, dropping, she, boom, she's just dropping this, the jimmies or sprinkles. What do you guys think, jimmies or sprinkles? Leave a comment down below uh, and getting those falling. It works well that way. Isolating the eyes. Look how sharp and clean these look. Well, I can't say exactly clean when you zoom in one-to-one because -one there's noise or grain. Again, no big deal. If you were to print this out, you wouldn't see the differences there. This one's at 2500 ISO. I could live there all day and be happy with it, even in this lighting situation that wasn't the best. Same thing there, another good shot. And then you finish it up with a nice isolated shot of a cupcake. It's not done with a macro lens. It's actually done with the kit lens. So overall, how did it work out? 
Well, I think this five minute portrait went very well. I'm happy with the types of images I captured from the wide angles to the mediums, to the telephotos, to the details. I have every piece of the puzzle that I look for when I'm telling the photo story. But how the D5600 and kit lenses work? They worked fine because any tool in terms of a camera that you put in my hands, I'm going to get great results because I know how to pull out great results from any camera. And that's not being arrogant. That's just being confident in understanding how cameras and the exposure triangle works because I've been doing it so long. And I want to let you know that you guys can get there yourselves. It just takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. So with the 18 to 55, it's not the greatest lens in the world. The 70 to 300, definitely not the greatest lens in the world. But if you know what you're doing, you can get great results. And I want to reiterate one more time that it's about the glass. Glass, 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 glass. If you feel that your camera and your lenses are holding you back, there are ways to get better glass that isn't terribly too expensive that are gonna help you get better results. So who is this camera for? It's honestly for anybody who wants to get out into the world and start taking photos. Because it's not about the camera. The camera doesn't make the photographer. The photographer makes the camera, which makes for better results. So don't forget that. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.